All right, so in the last set of videos, um, we've seen several examples where we work with the definition of the derivative, this limit definition. And I think we've probably seen enough to know that it's a fair amount of work, even for fairly simple functions, to use the definition to compute derivatives. Um, and of course, this is not going to be very efficient if that's, if that's the only method we have. Calculus is not going to be all that useful as a tool because there's going to be a lot of heavy lifting every time we want to compute a derivative. Um, fortunately, there are rules that kind of handle most of the situations that we have to, to deal with, and we rarely have to resort to the definition once we work out what all these rules are. Um, so I've started with three very simple examples here to you know, get us started, and then we'll work our way up through some more complicated examples. We've already seen a few, um, but we'll start with these. Um, now, a constant function. Um, here we probably already know the answer without doing any work, right? In fact, for a and b, we know the answer. If we remember this interpretation of the derivative. If we understand the derivative as slope, slope of a tangent line, well, um, these functions here are already linear functions, right? They're already lines, right? I mean, here's a horizontal line. Here it's a line with some slope. Um, but you know, the thing that kind of distinguishes lines from all other curves is that they have the exact same tangent line at every point, namely the original line. Um, and, and so we kind of guess already, well, every horizontal line has slope 0, so we expect the derivative to be 0. Um, here we know that the slope is m, so we expect the derivative to be m. All right? If we want to see that, well, in the first case, f prime of x is the limit h goes to 0 right? of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. But that's the limit of c minus c over h. And c minus c is equal to 0 regardless of the value of h. So that limit is always 0. Okay. All right. For the next one, We have the limit as h goes to 0, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And this time it looks like, you know, we've got we to do a little bit more work. m times x plus h plus b subtract mx plus b all over h. And what do we get? Well, this expands out to mx plus mh plus b. Right? So the mx cancels with the mx. The b cancels with the b. We have The limit as h goes to 0 of m times h over h. And as expected, that's just m. OK. What about this basic quadratic function? What do we get there? We're going to get f prime of x. So start with the same definition as always. This time, we have x plus h all squared minus x squared over h. And so this is going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x squared over h. And as expected, the terms that don't involve h, they cancel. We can divide by h in the terms that are left. And what do we have? We 
we have the limit as h goes to 0 of 2x plus h, which leaves us with 2x. OK, so we've got a few basic rules. Maybe that's enough to get us started. Um, but maybe we want to generalize part c. Maybe we want to say, well, what happens in general for power functions, right? We know how to do x squared. What about x cubed, x to the fourth? Um, can we come up with a general rule um, that handles any power function? We can, and we'll get started on that in the next video.